You have to reason about Noah's Ark and such and such. So the first part, could you, could I, um, um, if possible, Ron Seymour, just vibes and right here, here, here. So that first part of the question, the first part, the first question, the reasonment, just vibes in here. Yes, I agree. Greetings, everyone. Ron Seymour here, just vibes in there's two narratives out there um, that is floating around as far as everybody who's doing the studies and putting stuff out and in social media and whatever platforms they have about this thing with the Nephilims and these giants where it's either the sons of Seth that slept with the son, I mean the daughters of Cain which they say the sons of God slept with the daughters of men, and they referred to the, the, the sons of God as the sons of Seth and the daughters of man as the daughters of Cain. Then there's the other narrative that said it's, a, it's, the, it's the fallen angels that slept with the women of God, which the women of God is the women of men. So now, within these two narratives, we try to figure out which one of these narratives is the true narrative. Mm. And we might might be able to come to that true narrative. We might not be able to come to that true narrative, but it's up to everybody to dig into this thing and see what they come up with. You know, whatever we come up with, you might not agree or you might agree. But it's, I think it's something that needs to be kind of dig into a little bit because I kind of curious myself. <laughs> <coughs> all right, all right. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Thank you, thank you. I laid it out almost exactly, you know, even a little better, you know, tuning in on certain parts of it because, yeah, um, so just vibes. And so, you know, brother man, you know, we call each other and he call I forward as I was preparing to do another. You know, there's so much, so much things to say right now. You know, that's so much thing to say. But I never forget no way, you know, the crucified, you know, Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know. So, but here, 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 we have Genesis chapter 6, right? Genesis chapter 6, the whole flood narrative, right? Now, we utilize the Schofield Study Bible, and the Schofield Study Bible, some might say, is biased towards the, um, the, sons, of, um, the, the sons of Seth, or the sons of Seth narrative vis-a-vis -vis the daughters of men and the daughters of men meaning the daughters of Cain right so we have the sons of Seth the godly seed you know come from Adam who the Bible says was the son of God I, I don't know do you know do you know that the Bible says just, just reason with the eye just vibes in here with the eye does the eye know um, or have come across that Adam you know Adam Adam in the Bible is called son of God yeah Okay, for me, for ones and ones that want to find that, that's in Luke. I think around Luke chapter, maybe chapter 3-ish or so in Luke of the New Testament. Just for ones and ones, just to put this on the Bema here so that ones... Or the Bema is like where we will put the Torah scroll when mine and mine go up to read. It's almost like an Ayabingi, like the altar, so to speak. Though it's not an altar, altar. It's like, a, you know, a place for the scripts to rest. So if you go to Genesis... Not Genesis. Luke... Just for the son of God right here, where it says an Adam who was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. Let, let me bring that out on the screen because I got a little Nephilim, Nephilim um, placeholder right here um, on the screen right here. Because we had to just get a little quickly prepared. So let's go Adam, right? Adam, A-D-A-M. And let me put son, right? And let me put God in the search right here so that ones can see okay adam and then you see there's two verses where it's adam son and god interesting interesting for adam son and god we're using the kjv the 400 year bible because we're going to break out this matrix we got to use the bible or the version of the scripture that they use to build the matrix 
That's why we focus on the KJV. Not that we don't look at the other scripts or the other versions, NIV. I think a sister, one had Sister Tammy. He loves Sister Tammy. She had pointed out while we got to check a few of the comments and apology. Oh, my bad, my bad. You know, if I haven't checked out all of it, it's kind of hard to do. But, you know, I give thanks for those who, you know, share their comments or even their critiques. But Sister Tammy was talking about the NIV and the NET. And generally speaking, um, we'll look at those, but we'll look at those like secondarily or if it's really kind of hard to understand the, the plain KJV that can give you another a paraphrase. But it's always not as accurate as you, what you see on the screen right here with the Strong's Concordance or even the Blue Letter Bible, which is an online software that ones can use. But here is Genesis 4 and 25. There's two verses that say Adam, son and God in it. The first one is in Genesis 4.25, which says, And Adam knew his wife, Agan, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Right? Then we go to the New Testament, the Brit Chadash, the Adis, Adis Kidan. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, it says, Which was... You know me, I like to upgrade it. Who was, you know, who was, uh, which is a witch, bun a witch. But anyway, who was the son of Enos? Or that would be in the Hebrew Enosh, right? Enosh, right? Who was the son of Seth? Who was the son of Adam? Who was the son of God? Right? So the first point to establish is that Adam, right, was the son of God. Right. And even in the Hebrew view, because it was the Hebrews or the Yehudi, the Jews, right, the black Jews of that first century that wrote in the Greek, right, the Koine Greek. We took the Greek like we took English, like we take English, whether we say ain't, ain't and ain't come from the ain in Hebrew. Ain means that it doesn't exist. Right. Or there's not without in that sense. Ain't, you know, and we wrote in the popular language of the people like today we're speaking in English. You know, if we could, we would want, we would like to speak in, you know, Amharic or Hebrew or anything else. You know, what I mean, even to the, you know, to our Spanish speaking and French speaking brothers and sisters, you know, kudos to the I them, even though you didn't have a, much of a choice about it. But, you know, even y'all can speak the English, but then y'all can go off in, 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 in either Spanish or French and then you even develop a Creole. You know, what I mean, a, another kind of a, a code, you know, what I'm saying. So the Greek of the New Testament is not classical Greek. I just want to point that out. But even though it's Greek, to, the, to those who might say, how can the Hebrews use Greek? It says in the Bible, it says that Japheth, right, who the Greeks or the Ionians come from, right, shall dwell in the tents of Shem. So we look at that as prophecy that we will be using the Greek language at a later day, right, to communicate certain truths. My, that you will have to be really studied in the Hebrew to understand. But when you say the, the, the Ionians, you have to let the people know who the Ionians are. You know? yeah, let's pass over that one. Okay, the Ionians in your Bible would be called Javan. Javan, J-A-V-A-N. Look it up, J-A-V-A-N. In fact, since we already established the point that Adam was the son of God, right? we can go to Javan right here before we zoom in on these two different narratives. Right, so you see it right here in Genesis 10 and 2. The son of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, Meshech, and Tiras. Right, and then it goes into verse 4 it says, And the sons of Javan, now Javan, just for ones on the screen, in the Hebrew would be Yawan. Yawan, they have Yavan right there for the modern Hebrew speakers, but the Afro. The Afro-Shemitic, like we, the black Jews, we'll say Yawan, Yawan, right? But we say Yavan too, right? Because we, we capture it, we don't get captured by it. So that was the Ionians. That's where we get Ion, Ionian. In other words, imagine this. Javan is J-A-V-A-N, but it comes from Hebrew, Y-A-V-A-N, right? Or W, really more properly, W-A-N, Y-A-W-A-N, right? But now you know in English... I sometimes Y, right? You know that, right? I sometimes Y, right? Now, when you put the I and the A-W-A-N, I want, I want, when we contract it linguistically, it becomes Ionian, Ionian, Ion, Ion, Yawan, Yawan. You got to play around with those sounds right there, but all linguists 
understand how sounds can be compressed. It's like a chord in music. You could play the chord long or you could play it short. So and, and the original Greeks is us. Black but, people. So when they tell you about the Greek <laughs> this and the Greek that and the Greek this, don't let them steal that too, remember. That's and, why I wanted to break down the Ionian thing so they understand who the Greeks are. Okay, the okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. Okay, what you wanted to do, basically, hold on for a moment, let me see, I think I just did this the other day, I, I, I might be able to give ones a word picture right here, just the other day, I was downloading some possible memes and everything, and I had came across um, something of that nature there, where even the Romans, you know, the Romans were actually, you know, but you can look that up, in fact, I'll point this site out, check it out. Oh, here we go, here we go. We got a couple of pics right here. Here we go right here. Greeks and Romans on Egyptians. The Greeks and Romans on Egyptians, they, the Ethiopians, say the Egyptians are colonies that went out by Ethiopians, you know, and Osiris was a leader of that colony. This is one of the things that the Greeks were saying. But basically, the pictures one see, is statues and other things that basically show that not only were the Greeks and Romans my right, scholars, you know, they understood concerning the ancient Africans or the Ethiopians, but they also understood the later day, the ones who were more white, like for example, the people who took over, you know how white people came to Australia and basically took over Australia? Remember how yes. the Tasmanian people were exterminated? You yeah. remember how they came to America and took over America? Well, we had the people called the Hellenistic, the Helen, the Hel the children of Helen, Hellas, Hellas. That's what they get, Helen. Their great leader or chief or person that they named themselves after was called Hellas. Right, and they were what is called the Gracoi, Gracoi, like the Kraken, the Gracken, the Gracoi people. They came down into a civilization of black people who look much like what people are seeing on the screen, you know, or called Ionian people. Look up the Ionian people, and they basically upset and took over their civilization, but they also incorporated a lot of their sciences. So they kind of, they kind of killed and subjugated the people but took the benefits of their culture. The same thing did the Latin, the Latin, Latin, the Latin, the original, not the Latins like today so much as people say Afro-Latin and all that, but talking about the Latins over there in the Mediterranean. They took over a civilization that was run by people known as the Estruscans, Estruscans. Look up the Estruscans people, right? They were melanated people. They were also historically known as black people. So I'm showing ones here on the screen a picture of what you're saying since you brought out the main point you wanted to bring forward concerning, you know, the the Ionian people. They were the children of Java. But my point is this. The Bible says that that Japheth shall dwell in the tents of Shem. You ever come across that before? Yes. I've heard you say that. Okay, let's let people I don't want people to think it's hearsay. <laughs> But right here, we're going to now show you say, right? We're going to show you say, okay, Japheth, let's go right here, Japheth, and let me put tents right here, right? Just to look up so you can find the verses and take note, right? Right here in Genesis um, chapter 9, verse 27 says that Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, right? And he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan, Canaan shall be his servant, no slave here shall be his servant, right? Now, the point of this right here is that, you know, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, they were brothers. But the tents, tents are often brought out from a Hebrew, Judaic perspective, from even Old Testament time, to also be not just living, but also learning. The tents, the tents of Shem. So, and bringing this out is to show how the Hebrews in a New Testament time would then flip mode and use Greek. See, the problem is that a lot of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, you know, they're suffering from, you know, um, the inferiority posing as supremacy. You know, like all that they tell us, they make us believe that the Greeks and the Romans were like white people, you know. And because of that, we just reject it outright and we have like almost like a blind as a mental block on. You know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is that they were black people and that was a black civilization. You know what I mean? That had a lot to do even with the Hebrews and even with the Israelites in ancient times. So we're just showing some pictures of what actual monuments and actual artifacts they found. 
right? Showing, you know, the features of the ancient Greek and Roman people, right, were black people. Even when you look at Socrates, if you look at Socrates, there's a bus of Socrates. I had downloaded it the other day, but there's a bus of Socrates. Now when you look at, oh, here we go, we got it right here, a bus of Socrates. Now look at this man's face right here and tell me if he's not what they would call Negro. You know what I mean? Socrates, you know what I mean? Um, so a lot of the ones and ones that we've been really, you know, it's a horrible time, you know, like when it says in the Abrahamic prophecy that the sun will go down, like the sun went down on Abraham and he envisioned a horrible prophecy of his seed going through like, you know, persecution and tribulation. Well, that's basically us. And to add on to that right here, we have the ro the royal tomb of Agai. This is a deceased person posed as hero being crowned by a woman. This is circa 350 BC. You can see that the man is heavily melanated. I know some people say that's a white guy. Well, if a white guy is that heavily melanated, then tell me what happened. <laughs> no, that's all. That's all. And another one here where you can see right here. And you can see that there's a, this man is clearly black, right? And the person, I don't know if it's a man or woman, it's not really clear. Let me read what it says. It says, the tomb of Queen Eurydice, right? Mother of Philip II of Macedonia. Remember that Alexander the Great, he was from Macedonia, right? And he was more like, historically speaking, genetically speaking, like a mulatto. He would have been like a mulatto. You know, like there's many black people who have a white parent or a black parent, so forth and so on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And grandmother of Alexander the Great. The scene is from the back of a throne in her tomb depicting Hades and Persephone riding on a chariot toward the underworld. It's interesting because either Hades, like a, a black person, a Persephone, uh, you know, looks like a, a light-skinned black. You know what it looks like, brother? Black and Spanish. You ever look at some of the ancient stuff and when you see the black and the and the other that's not overtly black, it's like black and Hispanic, right? Yes. Even when you look at the Arabs over there, they almost like Hispanically related. <laughs> um, um, maybe the Indian Portuguese when they started to mix in Portugal. Ah, you see what I'm saying? So it's just for us to understand, you know, the family, you know, you know, understand humanity, and then when we understand and we can appreciate love, what is, right? We might be able to see the plan of salvation. So. A little bit on that, and we're going to get off of that point, but it's to the point about the Nephilim, to explain the two different narratives, right? These two different narratives. So the Nephilim, were the Nephilim um, angels, fallen angels, were they giants, or were they the children of Seth, right? Were they the children of Seth? So my first point in seeking to prove that the sons of man, let's go right here to where we are at in... Genesis chapter 6. So I'm going to have to bring up the Hebrew here because the giants point. Let's first of all dismiss the giants. I'm not saying that they were not giants because there is a mention of giants like ones who are very tall. But this part here in the scriptures that a lot of people get kind of like mixed up. Let's go right here to um, Genesis. Um, what's the key word? What's the key word we can um look at right here sons of god okay let's go sons of god sons of god so we're gonna go to genesis chapter six but now when people begin in chapter six of genesis they're actually beginning a little bit too late what i mean by that is you really have to begin with nod i, I didn't say nod or like fall asleep nod but yeah, interesting how that worked out, right? Nod, even from the English. So basically in the Hebrew, that means like a wanderer. Nod is like a wanderer. Like the wandering stars, the fallen stars. That's where the, the, fallen, the fallen angels went to. Now the fallen angels were the Nephilim. Now let me say it once again. The fallen angels, based on the scripts, the Hebrew, the Ethiopic, and even what they call extra-biblical works, which we don't really look at them as extra-biblical, but the book of Adam and Eve, for example, and the Ethiopic book of Enoch, if you read it and we understand it in context with the canonical scriptures, like the so-called, what they call the Bible, right? It begins, and the Kevr Neges, also the Kevr Neges. You know that, right, bro? We went up, we took... Yeah. 
it's chapter 100 of the Kevin and the Guest. And we, we favor for the English as a first step, though we have the Ethiopic, if anyone is interested in what Budge translated. But the Queen of Sheba and the only son Minulik, that particular document there, if you go to the Queen of Sheba, only son Minulik, also known as the Kevin and the Guest, the Glory of Kings, or some say the Kiber Nagas, um, chapter 100, it speaks about the fallen um angels you have that chapter right there because in order for us to first of all even even bring out the truth of what the which interpretation is correct right or is right and accurate because both of them have elements of the truth but the one which that, book is that? um kebron the guess we're looking at the Ke uh, or what is what they call the kebra yeah, I could probably bring it up on the screen as well. Yeah, it's chapter 100. Chapter 100. Let me see if I can do this while I find that. I'll try to bring up a PDF for the people right here. The Kebra and the Guest. Okay, what is it saved as? I think it's saved as the Kebra. Right, let's go right here. There we go. Let's go right here and let's see if we can word search this right here. Um, let me see. Uh, it's talking about the angels. One shot firing in my neighborhood. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put on, put on, put on the shutters, man. That's why in those old in those old palaces and ca castles, they used to have like what we call the storm doors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Let's see right here. Oh, it found the chapter. Okay, the history of the angels who rebelled is given in chapter 100 of Kevin and the Guest. These angels were wroth with Elohim, with Exia, with the sustainer, with God, for creating Adam. And they reviled Elohim and Adam because of his transgression. All right? I'm going to the summary in the first part of the book, but it's chapter 100 of the Kevin and the Guest, right? And it says, Elohim reminded them that Adam was only a creature made of dust and water and wind and fire, whilst they were made of air and fire. They were made specially to praise Elohim, to praise John, to praise God, whilst Adam could be influenced by Satan, by the adversary or bad mind, the adversarial mind. Had they been made of water and dust, they would have sinned more than Adam. In answer to the angels, right? Now here we're talking about the angels. In answer, you know, to the Malachim in the Hebrew, in answer to the angels, in answer the angels said, right? Make us even as Adam and put us to the test. And Elohim gave them flesh and blood and a heart like that of the children of men. Thereupon they came down to earth. Now, their coming down to earth is the fall. And this is where the name Nephilim, Nephilim in the Hebrew means fallers. Nephal or Nepal, 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 Nephal in Hebrew means to fall. Nephilim means the fallen, the fallen, like the fallen ones. It's like in a plural sense, the fallen ones. Literally in the Hebrew, the Nephilim. And we're going to bring it out from the Genesis, from the canonical scripture with the Hebrew. But they came down to earth and they, and they mingled with the children of Cain. The children of Cain. Where did they mingle? In the land of Nod. In the land of Nod. See the word Nod in the Hebrew. The word Nod in Hebrew. If we're correct with this. It means it means wanderer. Because why does the book of Jude call them wandering stars? Right? Wandering stars. Right? In other words, they are wandering stars in the heaven. They're the planets. That's why we say earth is not a planet. Planet means a wandering star. If you look in the heavens, you'll see that some of the heavens seem to go forward, but there is some of the heavens that seem to go backward. The, the stars that go backward, these are the wandering stars. So, so in the heavens spin in two different directions. The heavens spin in a forward and a backward rotation. So the, the, the wandering stars are the planetes. Planetes. Right? But here we have those angels that that fell, right? That I'm came. Glad you read that. I'm glad you read the conversation with the angels and the Mosai. 
and his explanation to them because a lot of people have this false narrative of this fairy tale of heaven so i'm glad you read that to show the conceitedness in these angels oh and that is why we need to also touch on are you really going to heaven reasoning you know what I mean? Are you really going to heaven reasoning and break down this whole going to heaven thing? But just a little bit more here. This is the first part of the Kepler and the Guest. This is, this is Budge's version. And yes, bro, I'm going to send that forward to the eye. And we also have that available in the print for ones and ones. Check out LOJS.org, you know, the bookstore. But right here, 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 you can get a soft copy or the, the PDF. Here it says this, that these Nephilim. Okay, let's, let's do this right here. You have you still have Genesis chapter six in front of you? Yes. Okay, let's braid this right here. We have Genesis chapter six. It says, And the sons of Bnei Elohim saw that the daughters of men. Now, the reason why we pointed to Adam was son of God. Right? Because if I'm a son of God, you know what I mean? Then basically it's like that God aspect is part of me. So when it says the sons of God. Therefore, if Adam is sons of God, his sons, especially the sons that still do right, like Seth from the Seth lineage, are sons of God. Seeing the daughters of men, you know, it's like we say God made man, but man make men. I don't know if ones get this, get me on this. God make man in his image yeah. of his likeness, but man make men. Yeah. Man can make other men in a whatever image and likeness he want to make men. You know what I mean? You know, but man cannot really, men cannot really make one who know their son of God. Because if God is your father, you know what I mean? You should understand in what form you were created. You know what I'm saying? So it says, when they saw the daughters of men, the daughters of men are the daughters of Cain. Right? The daughters of Cain are the daughters of men. Because the sons of God were the children of Seth. Right? Who still, even though Adam and Eve, but Adam was kicked out, they still tried to maintain, uh, as we would say today, a godly life. While, while Cain's lineage right, had fallen. In fact, for ones and ones who are so interested, the Cain lineage, when people talk about the Anunnaki, the Anunnaki were ucking with Cain and his descendants. So when they talk about genetic engineering and all of this and that and everything that was going on, that was happening with Cain and his descendants and the whole Anunnaki thing is based in the Nephilim. The whole Anunnaki thing is in the Nephilim. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to point it out because I know some have bought into that Zachariah Sitchin to his narrative. He brought some good evidence and facts to the forefront. But whenever they try to then try to go from Anunnaki, Sumerian stuff and try to link the Bible, they make some critical errors, bro. We could probably get into that at another time. I'm surprised a lot of them, they really don't know the Bible. You know, like when we talk about the natural man, the psychicos man, how he can be intelligent and learned and wise, but the biblical, the biblical thing is totally closed up to them. You know what I mean? It's, it, they don't really see how it goes together. So here, the sons of God are the sons of Adam, and Adam was the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fear to say not they were fear like in the white supremacist sense but they were tob tob or tawab tawab tob like tob like tobia right it means good pleasant agreeable that they were good pleasant agreeable that they were good right you know but remember that good can also be subjective like what's good like what i might say is good my brother might not say it's good for him Yes, sir. You know, I might say this woman's good for me, but he, that might not be the good woman for him. You know what I'm saying? So in that sense, so they they chose what it says. It says, and they took them wives of all that they chose, right? Now let me go on to the next verse. The next verse says, well, the next verse says is where Yahweh, where he said that his spirit should not always um, yadon, strive, contend with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So even though, my right, notice the difference between man and men. I want to, want to understand how deep this is in the Hebrew. So there's a difference between man and between men. In fact, when it says right over here, it says, yeah, because men is in the plural. Man is like Adam, the sons of Adam, sons of God. You know what I mean? Remember, Seth was, it was Seth resembled his father. 
You know what I mean? Abel also, in that sense, re re resembled his father. But Cain killed the one who resembled his father, who was son of God, because Cain basically, as people say today, was like the son of the devil, right? In, in that sense, right? Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, here's the verse that throws everybody for a loop to get to the, the question that I asked from the outset. There were giants. Everybody see that? There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. Now this is a whole mouthful. There's so much conspir biblical conspiracy theory. Some, some theories are proven to be real. Some are not quite as real. One is this whole giant thing. The word giant here is not reflective of the Hebrew. See, the Old Testament and the King James Version that everybody talks about, that's where they get this giant from. Because none of y'all was reading Greek. But this was Hebrew, right? The word here, um, I just I just hit on it. The H5303 is the word um, nephil. 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 They have this here. BDB says giants. Now, I know people say, well, it says giants. I know. But in studying Hebrew, we know what the Hebrew words really mean. We know what the etymology is. And we know what the con, the connotation. You know what I mean? You know, like... Like, like good is good, etymologically speaking, but something that's bad can be good. That's a connotation. Because then something bad is something else that's bad that is really bad that you wouldn't take as good. You know what I mean? But we, you know how we do words. So they put in the word giant to keep people on that giant thing. But notice what it says here. Strong's definition says, properly it's a fella. Fella. F-E-L-L-E-R. Fella. That is a bully. Or a tyrant, they say. A bully or a tyrant. Right? But then it says it's from the H5307. Let's click on that. Nafal. Everybody see Nafal? N-A-P-H-A-L. Nafal. Nafal means to fall, to lie, like to like lay down, to be cast down, to fail. Right? To fall. To fall of a violent death. To fall prostrate. Right, to fall upon somebody, like to attack somebody, you know, to fall away, like to fall away from the yellow brick road, <laughs> to fall short of something, to fall out, right, to settle, like to waste away, right, to be inferior to, but the basic idea, or even to overthrow, right, so there's a sense of it to fall, literally, there's a sense of it to fail, right, to cause to fail, right, and to fall down. Now, what they did right here in the old King Jamesian translations, they put the word giants because they couldn't quite understand the word nephil, nephilim. They didn't quite understand, or maybe they didn't want to understand. I don't know what was in their mind, so I can't say. I'm just kind of theorizing here on what the translators were thinking. But one thing we know is that more better knowledge has come out since the Ethiopic Book of Enoch and since like so-called Ethiopia was uncovered for the Western world and a lot of these ancient scrolls and manuscripts. So this is why nowadays we have a little better access to certain information that some of the original translators of the KJV didn't. So whenever they came across a word in Hebrew they didn't understand too fully, they often relied upon maybe the Septuagint the Septuagint Bible, which is the Greek Bible that was said, the original Septuagint was originally said to be translated sometime around 300, you know, um, A.D., right, roughly around that time. But the oldest version of the Septuagint they have today is from 300 C.E. <laughs> you check that out? <laughs> So the original one was translated sometime around 300 by the Hebrews who spoke Greek well and knew the Torah, right, in 300 roughly A.D. But the oldest one they have available today is 300 C.E. So almost like 600 years later. So this is why the Septuagint is good, right, in some areas, but we question it because they don't have the older manuscript. But now this particular word here, giants, is wrong. Giants, the reason why they have the word giants is because in the Greek, they use the word gigantes. In the Greek, the word gigantes is how the Greek translators translated nephilim. But nephilim, as anybody who understands Hebrew knows, means to fall. The fallers. 
right? And therefore, bringing it into the context of the narrative, right? Adam, in a sense, you know, we always hear about the fall of man. Notice that. We always hear about the fall of man. I'm not saying that man in his psycho-spiritual consciousness did not fall. You know, sometimes we have good days, sometimes we have bad days, you know, using that simple point of view. But I think that it's because of the fall of the angels. And when did the fall of the angels happen that we have in the book of Jude and we have in Ethiopic Enoch and we have in the Kevin and the Guest? When did this fall, right, of the angels occur? According to the narrative right here, the fall of the angels, right? And people say, well, that's not in the Bible. But notice, the Ethiopians have testimony since the Ethiopian eunuch in the Bible, right? That's back in the days, right at the time of Paul, before the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. So we know that there were Ethiopians who were Jews or Hebrews or Israelites that had, that had spiritual commerce and otherwise with the people of that particular land over there in that particular time that we have in the New Testament of the Bible. I point that out to ones because ones follow the European, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant narrative. That's why in the Catholic Bible, it even has more apocryphal books than in the nowadays Protestant Bible because they're trying to cover up something, you know? So they, they tell us about the fall of man. Now, true, man, well, man fell, but not like the, like the angels fell. <laughs> oh, I didn't even mention that in the Amharic, in the archaic Amharic, the word nephil, nephilim in the Amharic means foolish ones, ones who act foolishly. So in the Amharic, it has a foolish acting foolishly sense, but it, we have the Hebrew of the Torah here of Genesis, and we have nephilim, which means fallen ones. These fallen ones are the angels that had reviled Adam. When did they revile Adam? They reviled Adam because of his transgression in the Garden of Eden. Now let's look at our Bibles for a moment. If we turn to Genesis chapter 1, with chapter 2, the creation, right, and Adam and the gardener, and then we have chapter 3, right, the, the whole temptation in the garden, so forth and so on, right, and then we have the, Adam being kicked out of the garden, right, and now here's what's very interesting. When we get to chapter 4, right, just before Cain, Cain is born in chapter 4, at the beginning of chapter 4, Abel and Cain and Abel, right? And then we have, at the end of chapter, two, chapter 3, we have, So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim, or kirubim, or I like to call them kepraim. Kirubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So we know that Adam, according to the Bible, was kicked out. Now when I say Adam, it says the man. I know some people will ask, what, what happened to the woman? That's another reason, man. <laughs> Take note, right? When the man was kicked out of the garden, right? And then we read in the Kevin Guess that the angels, they reviled man after his transgression in the garden. Are, 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 are y'all putting this together right here? After his transgression in the garden. Right? Let's see if we can go right here. Because we was looking at the summary right there. But let's go right here. Here we're in chapter 100 of the Kevin and Guess. Now these works was known to the early church. When we say the early church, the early church from from, we could say, from the Bible days, the New Testament, you know, all before 70 AD, you know what I mean, till we get to the time of um, about the 4th, 5th century. This is when Ethiopia became a hidden empire, like around the 4th, 5th century. It's like Ethiopia withdrew off of the world scene. It was a weird, but like Ethiopia knew to some extent what was going on in other parts of the world, but people had kind of lost sight of Ethiopia. So that ancient Judaism and Christianity, you know, what's called the way of the Nazarene was preserved. But here in the hundredth chapter it says, and there were certain angels whom Elohim was wroth, with whom Elohim was wroth. Now he, the Noah of the heart, knew them, and they reviled Adam, saying, Since Elohim have shown love to him, he have set us to minister to him. Now note what it says here. This matches what we have in the canonical scriptures, like the Bible. Right, that's the King James Version, where it says that, you know, that the angels are ministering spirits. 
You know what I'm saying? To minister to man, to the righteous especially. Sent us to minister to him and the beast and creeping things and the fish of the sea and the bird of the air and all fruit and the trees of the field and the heavens and the earth also. That sounds like Genesis, right? That's under the beginning, right? And he appointed the heavens to give rain and the earth to give fruit, fruits and the sun and the moon also have he given him. That's not like Genesis chapter one. The sun to give him light by day and the moon to give him light in the night season. He have fashioned him with his fingers and he have created him in his own image, Genesis chapter one. And he have kissed him and breathed upon him the spirit of life, Genesis chapter two. He saith to him, my son, my firstborn, my beloved. We showed you where in Luke it says that Adam is the son of God. Now that explains why we have the sons of God in Genesis chapter six, right? And Adam's descendant is not Cain. Cain was cut off. Cain was sent into exile, perpetual exile. You know, that's how they dealt with that first murderer. But here he saith to him, this is what the angels were saying. My son, my firstborn, my beloved. And he have set him in a garden. Ah, See, now the angels are recalling, so when the angels get kicked out, they get kicked out between the time that Adam got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, right? And the births of Adam, I mean, Adam's, well, or the two children, Eve's, Eve's, <laughs> Eve's children, <laughs> um, Cain and Abel, right? And now notice what the angels are saying in chapter 100. And he have set him in a garden to eat and to enjoy himself without sickness or suffering and without toil or labor. But he have commanded him not to eat from one tree. And being given all these things by Elohim, Adam have transgressed and eaten of that tree and have become hated and rejected. And Elohim have driven him out of the garden. Boom. And from that time, Adam hath abandoned his hope. So Adam is and says it's hopeless. He don't know what to expect, you know, for the future. For he have transgressed the commandment of his creator. Now notice what the Kevin again says. And Elohim answered the angels, the Malachim, who reviled Adam on in this wise. So here's what we know. We know that the fallen angels were the Nephilim. Because Nephilim in Hebrew mean fallen ones. What we also get to know is that in the better, more contextual explanation of Zachariah Stitchens um, and Onaki rhetoric, that these angels, see, they want to tell you that the Anunnaki were Elohim. That showed me that they are of the Anunnaki or the Nephilim. Because the Anunnaki were not Elohim because they were fallen. Elohim didn't fall. It was the Nephilim who fell. And we now know from the Ethiopic, the ancient Ethiopic manuscripts, remember the Ethiopian eunuch? He was one of the first black Jews we have there in the New Testament, right? To speak of from Ethiopia. So this is why we make the Ethiopian connection in the Bible to the time of the Messiah. And we make the Ethiopian connection with these manuscripts and scrolls, right? Because when Yeshua said, ye shall know the truth, this is why they hid these scrolls. And note, note this, a lot of the scrolls that the Ethiopians have, the ancient scrolls, Kevin Neges, Ethiopic Enoch, Maccabees, other documents like that, the Gedla Adam, the Book of Adam and Eve, were known in other churches and were even known in parts of Europe. But when the Romanism rose up, when the Babylon of Revelation rose up, you know what I'm saying? They stomped it out, but they kept it. You know, why they talk about the Pope and Rome? They have a lot of underground libraries, ancient rare manuscripts. What are they doing with those things? You see, that's why when Mussolini invaded, you know, Ethiopia, they tried to uh, stomp out all of those, to steal all those documents, right? Because if they stole those documents, then they could fulfill what their daddy Satan wants. What it says in Revelation, and Satan deceived the whole world. But it says, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. So if you're watching this, you're meant to watch this here so you can get the true narrative. So the Elohim, they answered the angel, angels who reviled Adam on this wise and said to him, why do you revile Adam in this wise? For he is flesh and blood and, let's scroll over here to the next page, flesh and blood and ashes and dust. And the Malachim, right, they answered, and said to him, 
may we declare before thee the sin of Adam. Look at this. These angels, the same fallen angels who later on people, you know, call the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were not the Elohim, but the Anunnaki, the Nephilim pretended to be Elohim, especially to Cain's descendants before the whole male lineage got wiped out through feminization. Uh-oh, did I say that? May we declare before thee the sin of Adam, right? Elohim said to him, declare y'all his sin, and I will hearken to you, and I myself will answer you in respect of Adam, my servant. So notice, this. Elohim is defending even wayward Adam, even fallen Adam, we could say, or kicked out of the garden Adam, right? Because see that, angels who are up in the heavens, According to the Bible, the scripts, the ancient scrolls, they came down to earth, right? Isn't that what they said? The Anunnaki means those who came down, yes. right? They came to earth, and then they genetically modified some men. People say, oh, that's what God did to Adam. No, no, you're a liar. No, that's what the Anunnaki, the Nephilim did to Cain's lineage. That's why we have a whole bunch of daughters of men. Notice, where's the men? Anyway, let's go on. We're going to touch on that too. For Elohim hath worked on behalf of Adam. Elohim said, I created him out of dust, and I would not cast away that which I have fashioned. I brought him forth out of non-existence. It's what we call, um, you know, the Ain, the Ain, like Ain Sof, from non-existence. Ain Sof, the Ain, right? From, from Ain't. He called us from Ain't when we was Ain. Ain. And I will not make my handiwork a laughing stock for his enemies. And I notice what the angels said. This is the angels who are the Nephilim, right? So when it says in the Bible that um, in King James Version, chapter 6, it says, And the giants were in the earth. It's, a, it's supposed to read, And the fallen, the fallen were in the earth. Who, which fallen? The fallen angels were in the earth in those days the nephilim but see what happens they put giants from the greek the greek says gigantes gigantes like big ones like big ones like burly ones right burly ones but it puts a connotation that these angels we don't know how tall these angels were now remember i just about to ask that there was the is there somewhere where it's written where the average height of these these Nephilim was? Well, here's what here's what, we, here's what we do know. It does seem like that when whenever Malachim Malachim came into the earth like messenger angels from above, because we have messengers and you know we have messengers below. But when messengers from below above came, that it always seemed like they were very. It does seem that they were tall. It does seem like the angels were like majestic. They were like like tall. You know, like tall beings. You know what I mean? The angels. Because notice this. In the scripts, it always seemed like people know an angel, right? <laughs> right? It, it seems like they always knew an angel. But I'm saying that not to say that they was not tall beings. But the point is that when they say giants in Genesis 6 and 4, the Hebrew Nephilim don't mean giants. It means fallen ones. You see what I'm saying? And then when we recognize there was a city called Nod. I haven't even got to that one just yet right here. I just want to share with people the backstory of when the fallen angels fell. The fallen angels, they fell after the Garden of Eden incident because they were reviling Adam. And these fallen angels was not Satan. I want to point it out. Satan becomes their leader after there was a little war <laughs> in heaven. Satan is another being. I'm talking about the one, well, actually, we call him Satnael, right? You know, when he was still an L, you know what I'm saying? But after he lost the L, he just became Satan. He became the adversary. I'm talking about that there's a being, right? But that being, right, has his angels, his messages. Now, I didn't say messengers, because see, a message and a messenger, think about, yeah, it's basically one and the same. It's just like our brain and our spine up and down that Jacob's ladder as messages. Sometimes, and we all know this if we be honest, like Johannes, that ideas come into our head when we least suspect them. We're like, where did this come from? Why am I thinking about this? And you can either accept it or reject it. 
if you ever notice, have you ever been angry? You've been upset. You want to hurt somebody. All it takes is for somebody else to just give you a message. Yeah, you need to hurt that person. You know what I mean? That suggestion, that message, you know, because like the principle of like attracts like. So what happened obviously was that Satan, this being that was removed from the heavenly court, right? Because of something that happened around, around Adam's creation. You know what I'm saying? That the other, some other angels began to vibrate along that frequency. And when he saw what happened to, to Adam in the Garden of Eden, it became for Satan, for Satan, like, ah, see, I told you so. You know what I mean? And this is why now in the Kevin of Guess, the angels are about to reply, no, praise be to thee, O Lord, for thou, the knower of hearts, knowest that we have reviled Adam because, see, Jah just checked them for reviling Adam. Now they're given a reason like, no, no, you don't understand. We reviled Adam because he have transgressed your commandment. Like we're doing this like on your behalf. That, that he was not to eat of one tree after thou hast made him Lord over everything. It sounds like some jealousy hiding, right? Which thou hast created and hast set him over every work of your hands. And if thou hast not told him and if the eye had not commanded him not to eat of one tree there would have been no offense on his part. And if he had eaten because of lack of food, there would have been no offense on his part. But thy word, now remember this from the true understanding, when we say thy word, like when we say the Jah, his word, his word is the pre-incarnate son. The, the incarnate son we know as our savior, as Yeshua, Hanotri, right? But before that word would become flesh. So when they say thy word, you know, we got the father and son in the mix here. They say, but thy word made him to know. And thou didst say, as surely as thou eat of this tree, thou shall die. Or more better from the Hebrew, from that time you eat the tree, you will be degenerating. You'll be dying to death from the Hebrew, dying to death. Motimotun. And he, after hearing this, made bold and ate. So the angels here are sounding like the prosecutor in court, right? They sound like the prosecutor. Thou didst not let him lack sweet fruits to eat from the garden, and thou didst not let him lack one to comfort him and a companion like to himself. It sounds like, sounds like some jealousy, right? And sounds we, like it almost like it was rooting for him to fail. Exactly. And so there's some jealousy. Like you gave him a companion. You gave him all of this and that, you know, and these things we say and make known to thee. And we have revealed to thee how he have transgressed thy commandment. Right. And the merciful one, the love of mercy answered them on behalf of Adam. So remember, Adam is on earth, but this is taking place like in the, we can say like the heavenly courts right here. Right, so it's Jah who is defending. Oh, check this. Elohim Ha'ab, Exiabihir Ab. God the Father is the advocate, like it says in the New Testament, that Yeshua is our advocate. He's going to bat for Adam. And he said to them, You have I created out of fire and ear with one intent. So the angels were created out of fire and ear with one intent that y'all should praise me. Him have I created of twice as many elements. A reason for the jealousy. It says him, speaking of man, right? You know, like some men want to be angels, right? I said it was more complicated to create a human than it was to create the angel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so some men want to be angels, but here, Josh checking these angels, these soon to be fallen angel saying that him speaking Adam have I created of twice as many elements as as you of dust which is the afar afar and water and of wind and fire and he became a being of flesh and blood look at that alchemy from dust and water wind and fire he became a being of flesh and blood and in him are ten thoughts this is the part I love right here Check this out, brothers and sisters. In him, to say in man, in us, are ten thoughts. This reminds me of the sons, you know, the Bain Elohim Hayim, his parable, Yeshua's parable, when he talk about the five wise and the five foolish, right? But in man, right, are ten thoughts, right, or ten intentions. Five of them are good and five of them are bad. I like to liken this with what we 
get from our perception of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if his heart incite him to good, the yetzer hatov, the inclination to good, he walketh, he trotteth with a good intent. And if Diablos has Satan, the adversarial mind, you see, because Satan has the power to, to, to broadcast, to project. You see what I'm saying? That's why a lot of times people say, like, like, lively up yourself, like lift up your vibration. Because any of us, when we're on a low vibration, and if anybody's wise, spiritual, you notice when you're on a low vibration, you feel tempted to all kinds of things. You know what I mean? Your door, your window, everything open. You know what I'm saying? Your window, your door, every yeah. And if Satan, the adversarial mind, the adversary, but people try to spook him out like like he's he's just a being. No, when you recognize the power of Satan within his limitation is to cast thoughts. If Satan seduces him, seduces man, he man walketh on an evil path. As for you, he turns now to the to the Malachim, the angels. Y'all have no other objects in your minds but praise of me. In other words, y'all should have no other object but this jealousy of Adam. With the exception of that arrogant one. With the exception. So now the arrogant one is Satan. So we have Satan and we have the angels. That's why Revelation says that Satan, Satan, and his angels. Because they drew to the party the vibration, the frequency right of the adversary they already had like they would say a hard on or enmity against adam against when man say his, when you say his angels put that into context one tenth <laughs> yeah one we can eat now <laughs> of the army he went to war against the mosa with it's his angels who he have gone here with it one tenth no Let's clarify this one tenth to see the percentage of how big this one tenth is because when you say one tenth of something, it seems small when you're looking at the tenth. You're just one of the ten. Mm, mm, mm. Now, if you farming an army to go against the most high, right? You didn't think you got to come fully loaded? You got to come with as much soldiers as possible, right? Mm. If you go up against the Most High and His angels, them, especially knowing the power of the Archangel Michael, right? Mm, mm. True, so you got true. to come with a solid, you know, like a solid force. So now, if you still have one tenth of that, and you don't, yeah, it's a serious battle going on. Mm, mm, mm. And a lot of it's because of, because of man. In other words, it's not saying that man didn't mess up in the way that the fallen, the soon to be fallen, the Nephilim said, you know what I mean, when they were still up on high, you know what I mean, before the Anunnaki fell, right? But they had no right to. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's like, say, I criticize somebody in your family, you know what I mean? You know, your brother, you know, your wife, your sister, you know what I mean? And even though the criticism might be right, you still are offended because I have no right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's for me to do, not for you. <laughs> ah, that is the point. That's why Jah was saying to them that, that your only intent, right, was should have been to praise, to praise me. But instead of praising me, you're getting all caught up in Adam's thing because of that arrogant one. So when it says arrogant one, right, is speaking of Satan. It's speaking of Satan, right? It's speaking of that one that, that, that people call Satan. That's why that, that, that helped to clarify Revelation, you know? So what the brother was pointing to right there was what Enoch, right? In the book of Enoch, yep. where it talk about one-tenth, that even though his host, he only had one-tenth of his angelic power, in a sense, of the angels, of his, you know, um, evil messengers, left him so through one tenth look at the world you know what i mean if if that's the case that's why it says right here and as for you right y'all should have no other object in your minds but praise of me with the exception of that arrogant one who produced evil now notice it don't say that he created evil yeah produce of it produce evil i'm gonna check this one out because we also have the ethiopic enoch in yeah, mass production going on Ah, he's a producer. He's a producer. 
You know, like somebody, one man creates something or one creates something, but the other one, he gets the mass production <laughs> of it. That's the Henry Ford effect. Ah, industry. He gets industry. The Arik Satan got industry. And he became an evil being and was driven forth from your assembly. So this shows that Satan, right, no doubt was also an angel, a part of that assembly at, at some time or out of time, right? But now here he was driven from it when the next set of angels, right, started to, you know, um, 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 bad mind Adam. And why? He says, and now why do you magnify yourselves over Adam? Let's put this in our language, bro, today. Like, why are you bigging yourself up above Adam? You know what I mean? Why are you bigging yourself? Why Babylon big themselves up above, above Beta Israel? You know, above the Hebrews, above we Israelites. Why did Babylon big itself up above Rastafari? Why, why do you big yourself? Why do you magnify yourselves over Adam? If y'all were as he is, now here's the part. If y'all was as he is, and I had created you of water and dust, y'all would have been flesh and blood. And y'all would have transgressed my commandment more, get that word, more than he hath done and despise my word. Now, let me peep this to, to the Tawahido, to those who are, you know, in the King of Kings Christ. The my word, Elohim, the Father's word, is the Son. Remember the word in the beginning was the word, the word was with, was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim, and the word became flesh, and then dwelt amongst us. So that word became, you know, you say incarnate in the carnal, right? to take over this dimension and that's why because of that 10% thing that's why the word had to incarnate if you always what I'm saying yeah in order to show a powerful example right that can even transcend time although he was crucified then for those of us who are in that iritical mind you know what I mean it is still our time you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know it's still available for us and the angel said to him right Praise be to thee, O Lord, right? Far be it from us. It almost sounds like when they say praise be to thee, O Lord, they're giving lip service. You know, it's given like, it's not like really hard to call. They're like, far be it from us. We will not transgress thy commandment, they say, and we will not oppose thy word. So they're not going to transgress his commandment and they're not going to go against our black Lord and Savior, so they say. But, <laughs> for we are spiritual beings for life and he is a creature of dust doomed to folly and now try us this is it those Malachim right Malachim was saying that oh we would have done better than Adam right give us the you know give us the chance test us try yeah, us See, they already got that arrogant mind, that arrogant mind of Satan because he cast that thought. You know, it's like, it's vibes. People don't understand that vampires today are not somebody who just bites your neck and suck your blood literally. Even probably wasn't that way in the past so much. You know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's psychical. You know what I mean? It's like the... Like, like me and you reason this already. Like, like, so you know what? I call Lucifer himself Satan. I call him the Whisperer. Right? And the reason I call him the whisperer, a little while ago you talk about sometimes some things just come to your head, right? And it's like a download. Mm. So what he's doing as a whisperer is he sends out that whisper and it downloads into your brain. And if you have that carnal heart and that fleshy mind, these things here take a great effect on you and you're going to end up doing some folly. But when we say he have one tenth of his soldiers down here, he ain't the only one whispering, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're whispering, and 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 they they're very, they seem to be very industrious. <laughs> you know what I mean? They seem to be very industrious. Someone you said about the whisperer, um, the whisperer. Okay, that's one of his names. Yeah, that's one of his names too. There was something. It'll, it'll come forward. It's not the right time, right just yet. But yeah. Yeah, the whisperer. Oh, the vibration, the, the frequency. Yes. It's, it's all about that frequency. You know, he's sinking with that frequency. You know, that, and a lot of people don't understand that about the frequency, the vibe. 
You know, like back in the days, Rasta man used to talk about positive vibration or say, yeah, I mean, I don't like that man vibe. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because you can tell that from his word sound, his action. You know what I'm saying? It's a straight down road. Like, okay. Oh, oh that's what I was going to say. Ho I, hold for a moment. If you go in a room of people, right? And you walk in a room. I know everybody don't do this. Like, don't, don't vibe this already. You walk in a room. By the time you walk in a room, you could don't tell the vibes in this room is off. Mm. Mm. Because of your vibration. There's not a connection. You could feel something is up just by your vibration. Mixing with the vibration in that room. You could tell it's up. Mm, so mm -hmm. that alone should let them know how this thing work, how this dumb road work. Uh, you all gonna say? And vibration. You all gonna say? That, that's why the thought rolled up. But stop Satan's... When you mentioned download, the first thing that came to mind was spamming. Satan be spamming you. You know, and junk mailing you. You know what I mean? And, scam it, likely. It, yeah, scam likely. Yeah, scam likely. He'd be scamming you, but, you know, if you're on that vibration, you know, you're on that frequency, he pull you in because, and, and you know what thing about this? We're not talking no spookism. This is real world science. You ever heard of magnetics, vibration, and frequency? You know, this is real thing. Remember, they were spiritual beings. So in spiritual beings, they could see the unseen. Like wind has a form. Wind have a form. The words that we speak have a form. Mm. That's what people don't understand. Stop fighting a carnal war. This is a spiritual war. <laughs> yeah, even, even words have form. You know what I mean? They have form, they have color, they have energy. But on this frequency that we have fallen to, that's why we have to evolve, cycle spirit to evolve. You know, like Rastaman, we say higher heights. You know, like you say, we walk in a room and immediately there's a download. There's, there's a spam likely, you know, <laughs> be careful. Satan might, you know, spam you, you know what I mean? Scam likely, you know? So they said, now try us and put us to the test so that thou mayest know whether we are able to keep thy word. And then it says, and when they vaunted themselves in this manner, Elohim, the lover of humanity, right, said to them, if now y'all go astray so far in this as this in transgressing my word, the wrong will be upon your own heads. For, for Gehenna, Gehinnom, the um, Gehinnom is like, it was a place that the Israelites used to throw their garbage, like like a valley, valley of Hinnom, you know, or what they call hell. But it was a place where we would burn garbage. It says, and fire and sulfur and fervent heat and whirlwind shall be your habitation until the great day. That sounds like a desert to me. Anyway, no, no, anyway. <laughs> well, you, remember, um, you remember in the book of Enoch, right? When Enoch was up in heaven, going through um, the different heavens and stuff, and he heard this wailing song that was very disturbing. And he said that's part, um, some of the angels, them who like, rebel against the Mosa is being tormented there forever. Mm. True, true. I think it was uh, you. And, yeah, and remember they asked, you know, when he reached up to the most, he must plead their case for them. <laughs> not knowing that he's not going to end up being the judge of them. <laughs> and notice the name Enoch from the Hebrew, Hanok. Hanok means to initiate, to be initiated, right? Like to learn, like when you study and learn and you're getting into something. That's what the name Enoch, and in Arabic, Enoch is Idris. Idris, like Idris, like Idris Alba, right? Idris basically means, can also mean like a student. It's a type of student. It has that sense, you know? So when you start talking about who will be the judge, like how Enoch, you know what I mean? <laughs> he stands, you know, he stands for the righteous who are, are in that sense, scholars of the divine wisdom, you know what I mean? And also have, have word and deed. You know what I mean? It says, y'all shall be kept in chains, speaking to these fallen angels. This is in the film, which can neither be loosed or, nor broken forever. Now that happened in the book of Enoch, which comes okay. after what's being revealed right here in the Kevin Nagas. You know, but then he asks for a portion and as Ross, as I said, he got like a tenth. You know what I mean? 
but if y'all truly keep my word, Josh says to the to the angels who are about to become the Nephilim, the fallen angel, y'all do my commandment. Y'all shall sit upon my right hand and my left. For everyone who have conquered is mighty. Look what it says. For everyone who has conquered is mighty. <laughs> and he who is conquered shall be overpowered. Now Satan or Satan have no power whatsoever. I want everybody to get this right here. Because counterfeit Christianity, they got ones in a religious prison. You know, the Gentile religious prison mind state. Not, not, not pure religion, but in impurity of what they call religiosity. That Satan, Satan doesn't have any power whatsoever. For he only, for he hath only what he maketh to germinate in the mind. You know what germination is? Yes, I you're a farm boy you know what germination is germination is planting that seed and you plant that seed and something will most likely grow so it's saying that satan don't really got any power whatsoever he don't have power power but what he is able to do it's like a power but he don't have power in the sense like man has power created in the image and after likeness you know what i'm saying Man has power. Humanity has real power. But Satan doesn't have no power whatsoever. For he hath only what he maketh to germinate in the mind. So he casts a seed. And when the seed catch, like, you know, when it goes in, like that thought goes in your mind state, he cannot grasp firmly. He cannot perform anything. He cannot beat. He cannot drag. He cannot seize. He cannot fight. I know it's a surprise you. Satan can't do those things. He can only make thoughts to germinate silently in the mind. So even the evil doers that people want to call devils or satans, they're basically puppets on a certain level. Willing puppets or unwilling puppets. You know what I mean? Depends on how long they've been in that mind state. Because the longer your what it says possession is nine tenths of the law. You know when you talk about the seven the seven lives and <laughs> Satan so look for the weak, you know, because he he stay by the end of the week constantly. The strong come and check it every now and then. Me, the, Satan ain't got time to be by the end when the strong all day, you know. That's too much work. Until Just the, think about when he take, um, okay, like after the Messiah, out in the wilderness for 40 days. After mm. he left me, he went up and he for a while, you know. Yeah, 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 because yeah. That's too much effort and time. You, the, the, the amount of different works you could have get done, the amount of different people you could have corrupt by then. Yeah, so that's true. That's true. It's the weak heart that them he going after. The one them who have certain covetousness in the heart already, certain redder in the heart already. Mm. The God the don't tell you. Whatever you covet, he going to fill your heart with it. Mm. So if you don't have these kind of inclination within yourself, when... This man can whisper in your ear and give you this download. It's like a jump start for you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yes. Yes. You know. Are you not inclined to this thing already? Mm-hmm. Remember, remember those movies where they have to pollute the earth so alien beings can live in it. Yes. You know what I mean? And in the same sense, you got to pollute your mind. The more you pollute your mind, oh, yes. the more his seeds can grow. You know what I mean? His seeds can grow and everything. That's why, just a little bit more, brothers and sisters. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna seal this one up. I think at least on the first part right here, the first part of this, where we it says, and him who is caught by the evil mind. You know, and heal up Sister Sensi if you if you checking this, Sister Samilia, because you know she told me this a, a while ago, but I never forget it. It was like uh, you probably heard this this um, like a Caribbean proverb. I'm sure we have something up here, you know, um, on the on the so-called this North Country. But she said, um, "Bad mind, bad mind is worse than obia." Yep. You know what I mean? Bad mind. So when it says right there, and him who is caught by the evil mind. Check out the lingo here. This is translated, but it's it's pretty up, you know, from our comparisons to the good is. He who is caught by the evil mind, by the bad mind, he has prepared for destruction. Yes. 
And if a man have conquered the evil mind, a bad mind, you know what I mean? So that's not to say that even if if you if you're inclined to the righteous, you still have to go through that spiritual war and conquer the bad mind, conquer the evil mind, and find grace and have a reward which is everlasting, eternal. And to you, according as you wish. Now he turns to the to the to the angels, right, that become the Nephilim and that dwelt in the place called Nod, where Cain and his people, right, also dwelt with. You know, and got messed around with by the Anunnaki. If you if you know about that part of the story, this is the true explanation of that. Not like they tell you. They try to tell you that an Anunnaki was was the um, Elohim. No, the Anunnaki were the Nephilim. It's an Eim, but a different Eim. They were not the Elohim, but they were the Nephilim. The Elohim said to the Nephilim, the angels that fell, and to you according to what you wish. There shall be upon you the mind of a man and the body of a man. Because people always ask, well, how do these spiritual angels, you know, you hear that, right? Who are spirits and all that. How do they become man, like flesh and blood, so to speak, or at least a body of a man and the mind of a man? By the will of the Almighty, right? By the will of the Almighty. Otherwise, explain who dwelt in the land or not. The, 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 there was a city, there was a whole land Why the land has a name But why the name of that land means wanderers And why does it say in Jude Right, in the New Testament When it's talking about the fallen angels They're like wandering stars, right And then the land of Nod Nod means to wander <laughs> You know what I'm saying Because it's connecting where these ones went But they, they appeared as men that's why Enoch even tells you that uh, the fallen angels, right, those angels, they began to assimilate. Some of them began to assimilate like people's spouses, right, and then to sleep with the woman. It's right there in Enoch. They began to like, like a, it's almost like in these movies, shape-shifting. Like in shape-shifters, they began to almost like shape-shift or they might... Maybe it wasn't even a shape-shifting. They might have been able to put those thoughts into the woman's mind. And they targeted the woman also. That's the next thing I want to point out. Right? They targeted the woman. Now, why am I saying this is because in order to properly understand what happens in Genesis chapter 6, one has to better understand what happened in Genesis chapter, what is it? Chapter, chapter 4. And yeah, in chapter 4, where it says that he went to this land of Nod, right? East of Eden, right? And Cain knew his wife, and he bare a, a, a son, right, named Enoch. This is not the Enoch we're talking about. Wow. But there's a whole other set of Enoch teachings but out there. Too, with this land of Nod, remember when Cain was going over there before he went, he, he was scared to go. <laughs> Yeah, and he was talking about like somebody might kill him, so he was aware that there was other beings that must have been man-like. And then we have the Kevin and the guest that says we're, we're these angels reviling man. They basically said that man had only one job to do, and he messed up. Ha, 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 ha. And Josh said, why, why are you laughing at man? And he says, oh, it's because, you know, praise be to you, but, but we were done better than him, right? And this is where now they're getting the opportunity. They had the mind of a man and the body of a man. But take good heed to yourselves that y'all transgress not my word and break not my commandment and defile y'all not yourselves with eating and drinking and fornication or with any other thing whatsoever transgress y'all not my word. And this is one of the reasons why they look back in history in some cases and they find some ancient civilizations that doesn't seem to connect with known human civilizations but it definitely must have been built by people who were people like you know what I'm saying but they don't connect with other people like groups and this is the reason why they also find some of the legitimate bones of big people right and straightway there were given to them with his word flesh and blood and a heart of the children of men and they were content to leave the height of heaven this is like like jude 
in the New Testament and they came down to earth what does they say about the Anunnaki they who came down from heaven to earth right to the folly of the dancing of the children of Cain the children of who the children of Cain with all their work of the artisan all their work of who the artisan which they had made in their folly of their fornication and to the their singings which they accompanied with the tambourine and the flutes and the pipes and much shouting and loud cries of joy and noisy songs they had a whole music industry and their daughters were there hear this they enjoyed the orgies without shame <laughs> For they sent to themselves for the men who pleased them, and they lost the balance in their minds. That's one of my favorite verses. They lost the balance in their minds. And the men did not restrain themselves for a moment, but they took to wife from among the women those whom they had chosen and committed sin with them. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. See, now people say, well, what about the sons of God? That's the sons of God. No. This is what occurs with the land of Nod and with Cain's lineage. Have you ever noticed that Cain's lineage doesn't last very long? Cain's lineage, I think, stops around the seventh or the tenth generation. This is why it says the daughters of men. What happened to the men? If you know Enoch, right? You uh, if you are overseeing what's happening today with this whole feminization campaign to yes. feminize men and where men are becoming, if not physically feminized and in their mind state, you see what I'm saying? And even in some sense, the radical feminists are basically telling you it's to replace men. Where did they get these ideas from? Have they lost the balance in their minds? Uh oh. And the men did not restrain themselves for a moment, but they took to wife from among the women whom they had chosen and committed sin with them. For Elohim hath no resting place in the hearts of the arrogant and those who revile, but he abideth in the hearts of the humble and those who are sincere. And he spake in the gospel saying, woe be to those who make themselves righteous and despise their neighbors. And again, he saith, Elohim loveth the humble and he holdeth lightly those who magnify themselves. So I, I pause there for a moment right there because it goes on, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go on, brothers and sisters. This is mainly to bring some of the other ancient scriptures that they chose to, um, how can I say, kind of blackball, right? Because they come from the black Jews and the early black Christians, right? And straightway Elohim was wroth with them, and he bound them in the terror of Sheol unto the day of redemption. And the apostle saith, he treateth his angels with se severity. He treateth his angels with severity. It's in the scripts. Why would he treat his angels with severity? Talking about these fallen, the Philip. He spared them not, but made them to dwell in the state of judgment. And they were fettered until the great day. That's what the brother brought forward from Enoch. Right? Now remember, the angels fell after Adam was was expelled from the garden. You see what I'm saying? And that's and that's before, that's way before, that's generation before the flood. So we put the time of when Adam, it was during Cain. Cain Cain lived for a while. I forget how old, they don't talk about how old Cain was, but he lived for a while before Lamech. He lived to be very old. Yeah, he lived to be very old. Yeah. So he lived for a while. He lived through a few generations. So it came down in his generations once they built up their numbers. But this was after, this is well before, right? Well before the, the, the flood. So it says that the word of Elohim conquered. He who fashioned Adam in his likeness or form and those who had reviled and made a laughing stock of Adam were conquered. And the daughters of Cain with whom the angels had a company conceived but they were unable to bring forth their children and they died. This is the reason why they had to look for other baby daddies. And thus, this is where the children, the sons of Seth, who represent the sons of Elohim, come into the picture. Because we know that they had children, but then the children of them became men of renown. You know what the men of renown are? In the Hebrew, it uses the word, they were men of the Shem, the name. 
They were the ancient, you know, in mythology, they talk about these heroes like Zeus and all the rest of them. Okay. It, this is where these these legendary warriors who were like like men, they were like demigods, basically, from the offspring of Seth that came down off of the mountain and came away from the worship and had went into the daughters of Cain. But the daughters of Cain, they first attempted to to bond up, you know what I mean, with um with the fallen Nephilim. But they weren't able to conceive and bring forth their children and they died. And the children who were in their wombs, some died. A lot of them died, but some came forth. Having split open the bellies of their mothers, they came forth by their navels. That means almost like a kind of a C-section, but very, very vile, very gross and very violent. And when they were grown up, they reached man's estate. They became giants, it says here, whose height reached to the clouds. So they were giants, right, already from the Nephilim who bonded up with the daughters of Cain round about the place they called Nod. Nod was that city. Nod is where we get the Anunnaki city. From the Hebrew perspective, we call it the place of the wanderers because of the Anunnaki who wandered from the heavens like fallen stars, like when we see stars falling. You know what I mean? Nobody really saw what well, doesn't mention anyone see them coming down. But when, you know, in hindsight, this is why they are referred to and the place is referred to as Nod, the place of the wanderers. Because they wandered from the heavens. But then they had children. Now, these children were these kind of giants who were kind of half of this Nephilim. You know what I mean? Half of this Nephilim and half human, right? whose height reached to the clouds. But this is all before Genesis chapter 6. I just want to point this out. And for their sakes and for the sakes of the sinners, the wrath of Elohim became quiet. And he said, My spirit only shall only rest on them for 120 years, and I will destroy them with the waters of the flood. Them and all sinners who have not believed the word of Elohim. Right? And then it goes into a segue here to the flood and for those who believed the word of their fathers, their patriarchs, and who did his will. No injury came from the waters of the flood, but, they, but he delivered them, saying, If thou believest my word, thou canst save thyself from the flood. And then this is where Noah said that he believed and he was shown the four-sided ark. But I'm just pausing right here to get the backstory on what occurred with Cain line. So the Nephilim, right? The Nephilim first have their encounter with the Cain line in, in Nod. And this is why Genesis chapter 6 says right here, there were giants in the earth in those days. The more correctly, the Nephilim were still in the earth. The Nephilim were still in the earth. You remember how you... You mentioned Enoch. Remember Enoch? In yes. Enoch's time, didn't some of them get bound up? Yes. But some of them were still left free. A portion still was left free on the earth. You know what I mean? There was still, the Nephilim was still in the earth in those days. Some of them got bound up, but it was at 10%. When the Nephilim was still there, when Noah was building the ark. But that's what I'm trying to say, that, that there was these ones and ones, but some of them had got, you know, in other words, okay, even the Almighty, every day is a judgment day. There's a day of when the judgment will be complete. That could be called the judgment day. But sometimes he would judge different things strategically. He'd do surgical strikes. What we have in the book of Enoch was a surgical strike, but the, but the evil already was in man's hearts and minds. And then we had these two separate lineages of Seth children and of Cain's children that now started to blend except for the family lineage that comes to Noah. So in other words, if we take the narrative as it is, things must have got so bad. Remember how you said that your ace boon coon, you know, like a, or, or your, your bona fide, like if you knew a flood, you know, why wouldn't there be others? You know what I'm saying? 
one would think, why wouldn't there be others? Unless the deception was so complete, right, that there was only a remnant, a literal remnant, remnant. You see what I'm saying? That there was only a remnant, remnant that was left. And that was that family. So would they, all our families know, as far as the, the two narratives that we started with, is not either or, because the giant, the the Nephilims were created the giants. Them they created the giants with the with 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 with, with, uh, with Cain daughters. Yeah, girl, pick me then. Mm -hmm. So when we trying to make us argue between which one it is, it's actually both. It's both, but what's happened in the Nephilim narrative when people get to Genesis chapter six. They miss over nod. They nod. They nod or nod. <laughs> Let's say it like that. They nod or nod. And you can't miss nod because so much occurred with Cain's lineage. Do we think Cain, Cain's lineage didn't, didn't do nothing? There was nobody there? That, that's why when they find the Anunnaki thing, they can't put it in the right sequence because they miss over nod. They miss over the land of nod. Look what it says. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Right? So notice the presence of the Lord is the face of the Lord. So his face was on a particular region. His protection was on a particular region of the righteous. Right? But then there was another area over there which he just left to others. You know what I mean? Like the holy city, right? Is the holy city. But there's other cities, but they're not the holy city. So the holy city means his presence is there. So Cain went from the presence of Yahweh and he dwelt in the land of Nod. Where? On the east of Eden. Now think about this for a moment. Wait, on the east of Eden. <laughs> we talked about that before, about how the garden of Eden, all of Eden was not the garden, and the garden was not all of Eden. But east in the Eden was a garden. So when I think about Eden as a paradisical place, I think about Africa. I think about East Africa. Even Arabia was, was, was lush and green at one time. Arabia, why do you think we got so much oil today? Arabia had ancient civilizations that people don't know about because it's buried under the sand. A lot of people don't know that there's ancient civilizations that people don't even know about that was wiped out, you know what I mean, from previous times. I'm talking about in this like 8,000, 10,000 period of time. So the land of Nod, what does Nod mean? Nod, nude, Nod means wandering. Nod means wandering or wanderer. Right? Vagrancy. Right? Vagrancy. Nod. It comes from like wandering aimless, like a fugitive. Like a fugitive. It has a sense of exile. Right? But it also means to shake, to waver. Like to almost like be double-minded, to move to and fro. To move to and fro. You know what I mean? To also lament, to console oneself. That's where you get a lot of the, the Gilgamesh stuff that people be talking about. It all comes from that other land. So, so think about it like this. You had, you had the Horn of Africa, one river valley civilization. Then if you go beyond Arabia, you have another river valley civilization. So where if Africa was like the Eden, Africa was like the Eden, right? And there was a garden eastward in Eden, but we know that Africa in its fullness includes Arabia and the where Israel is today. You know what I mean? And it goes all the way up to the River Valley civilization. That was the what we call Africa today, if we will be honest with, with what we're talking about in the Bible as Eden, it was all of that land. You know, but, but in that land, he chose to make a garden. That's where we get the Garden of Eden. Now, the land of Nod, who dwelt there, and as Brother Man mentioned, they were afraid. Why were they why was why was Cain afraid? He talked about somebody killing him. And check it out, it wasn't none of the, the Nephilim that killed him. In fact, he worked with the Nephilim, in a sense. It wasn't the Nephilim that killed him. Who killed him? It was one of his own seed that killed him. Yeah. To show something about those genetics there. But notice something when we when you're reading about Cain's lineage, notice Cain's lineage just seems to stop at Genesis chapter 4. Verse 24, right? If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. 
right? And that's where it stops right there. In other words, we go through a couple of generations of Cain and then it just stops. I submit to you right here, since there's nothing new under the sun, the same way that there's campaigns to kind of change the created order of things, you know what I mean? Gender and all other kind of things. There ain't nothing new under the sun. No, and this one happened before more than once. These things happen more than once. Now, people will say, well, what about after the flood? Right? What about after the flood? We must understand that in the these Nephilim, these beings, some beings, right? Remember when it says all that have the breath of life? When it talk about the flood, it said all that have the breath of life. Did the angels, fallen angels, get the breath of life, or did they get the mind of the man and the body of a man? They were possessors. You know what I'm saying? That, that that the angels were not... Did he breathe into the angels the breath of life? No. So these beings, right? Remember there's places under the earth and even many ancient legends like from Sumeria, like I told you about the fish people. They have these legends of men walking out of the water with like fish on their head. You know what I mean? Now, although that's symbolic, it must tell us something. So... Did the fish drown? And since they were doing all sort of genetics, right? There were beings that we clearly do see after the flood. And people say, well, how about them? The breath of life was in them. Remember, they were not a part of the created order. If you, you know, for the earth. You know what I'm saying? But to kind of be there as a counterbalance until the end of time. You know what I mean? So there are these beings, right? that were able to defy the usual death, you know what I mean, of people because they're not fully, they have the mind of man, the body of a man, but remember what they are essentially. For example, did they have the breath of life? Once again, does a spiritual being need the breath of life? They were possessed. In other words, they were possessors. You know what I mean? They were possessors. And here's where we get this in a lot of these kind of movies and stuff where it seems like some spirits will go from body to body. And like the body snatchers, this whole idea of the body snatchers. You see what I'm saying? That these things are not just something that people make up. Because for somebody to make it up, where did they get that first idea to make it up from? A lot of the stuff that they hid from you, they put it back in your face as fiction. You know, that's why if you notice that all humanity, according to the DNA, uh, we just go through, we go through. Yeah, the, the call had dropped, brothers and sisters. Um, what you said, too powerful? What was that? Yeah, that's yeah, that truth a little too powerful for them, man. Mm, a, a little yeah. Bit. yeah, all these things there. Uh, you know, a lot of things where they hide from us, a lot of these truths and things they hide from us, they put it in, you know, in movies and shows as fiction. So yeah. you don't yeah, even try true. to connect certain things, you know? And then they do funny stuff, like when they say giants. Like another place to go, to go to Numbers 1333 for a moment. This is after the flood, right? This is after the flood, right? Numbers 1333, right? And then we compare this right here, right? Um, the daughters of men, they bear children to them, which were the same, were mighty men, men of old, men of renown, right? Um, now, another thing that is interesting too, right, is people look at the Bible, like they look at Genesis chapter six, and, right, they look at Genesis, okay, yeah, chapter six, and actually the fall, from Seth, the Seth lineage fall happened in the time of Yared. And Yared actually lived before the time, just before Enoch. In fact, Yared, you know, is the father of Enoch. So I'm, I'm pointing to, for the brothers and sisters who want to get more background on this, is the book of Adam and Eve in the apocryphal books and the lost books of the Bible, forgotten books of Eden. It has part of the books of Adam and Eve. And we also have that book here as well, 
for ones and ones want to get a copy of it is this one here it's called in the language the Gedla Adam it's a full of full it's a full of full of that as well but the, the lost books of the Bible forgotten books of Eden that one there I, I, I will highly recommend to ones and ones especially for Maccabees coming up but the combat of Adam and and uh, against Satan Adam and Eve against Satan it kind of what we get is parts of the narrative from different scrolls that was known right and by putting together and studying these things we can put together the narrative and we can see okay taking the Bible as the basic point of reference right what we find in the other narratives it only illuminates and helps us to understand the correct interpretation unlike what we've been given in religion and 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 you know um white anglo-saxon protestantism you know and all that are you there in numbers 1333 yeah now there's not one time that you will find the word giants right um okay giants giants uh, let, let me do this right here giants i'm gonna look up there's 12 verses in the bible giants the first one is Nephil, Nephil, Nephilim in Genesis 6 and 4. The next is two places in Genesis 13, 33. And we saw, this is what the spies said, we saw the giants, they said, right? The sons of Anak, the Anak or the Anakim. Ano Anaki, Anunaki, huh? Huh? Anunaki, right? An Anunaki, right there. Anunaki, and that comes from the Hebrew Anak, which has to do for necklace. Or long necks. Some people translate as long neck ones, but I look at it simply as the Anunnaki, the Anaki, which are the sons of the Anak. So that means it says, which come of the giants, the Nephilim. So in both places, you see the word giants is Nephilim, right? And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Now, something's a little convoluted right here. There's a little joke here for those who really know the Hebrew. Right, not even the Hebrew, the linguistic of the language, but in the narrative, this is when the spies that came back, that there was twelve spies sent into the land, and ten of them brought back lies that discouraged the Israelites from going into the land. And they say in this point that they saw the giants and the Philim. They are saying that they saw the Philim, right? Who were the sons of Anak, who come of the Nephilim. So what they're saying that we saw the Nephilim that were the sons of the Nakim, the Anak. Right, who actually who are of the Nephilim? We saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who are of the Nephilim. Almost like saying we saw the sons of the, the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who were the sons of the Nephilim. Why I'm saying this is because these guys don't want to get their story right right here. I'm talking about the quote here, who is being quoted? Because remember, these are the one who brought back the news that made the Israelites wander for 40 years and discouraged them. They say they saw the giants. You see what I'm saying? Who are the sons of Anak who come of the, you know, the, 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 the giants under the Philim. Don't you see that the, what they're saying is roundabout, is circular? It's circular. How can you, if you saw the Philim who were the fallen angels, they, they say they were the sons of the Anak. But we know that the Philim, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> were the fallen angels. Right? They're not really sons in that sense. They're almost like bastards because of their fall. But they connect them now with the Anakim because of the Ana Ano Anaki legend, those who came from above. That's why they say, which come of the Nephilim. Right? And notice what they say more. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Stop for a moment. How can you be in your own sight like grasshoppers? How do you know what you look in your own sight? And then they say, so we were in their sight. So the, the Torah students um, joke here is that we laugh at them like a laugh track should be on, on their witness. Their witness is not reliable. That's all I want to say. Their witness is not reliable. Because remember the same ones were saying that they were grasshoppers in the people's sight. But how do they know that? How do they know what the people saw? Because they went in the land like spies. But these are the same ones that came back and told lies that made the Israelites in the wilderness want to go back to Egypt and eventually made them wander for in the wilderness. What? Wander in the wilderness, you know, for 40 years, a whole generation. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, notice if you look at 
if you look at um go to deuteronomy 2 11 if you can if, if i just, just go forward we want to get every giant verse in here to show you the inconsistency of the king james translation on some key crucial thing and the inconsistency of the scholars the wannabe scholars that don't go through due diligence because the word giants come from the greek gigantes 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 which basically means like to be big big right but now deuteronomy 2 11 let me know when you got it bro i'm there 2 11 says right it says which were accounted giants now the word giants here in the hebrew everybody see it is rafa rafa now the rafa has to do with these fish people that you see in like sumeria coming from like walking out of the water with a fish like on top of their head like a fish like a, a fish cap that goes down their body these are called these are the refaim refaim right refaim is a is a whole other people say it's a tribe of the of ancient people but they don't come down from any of the seed of adam so there are other beings here so we have the bait rafa right the bait rafa but let's get to the root word because there's the rafa right the rafa here which it says to heal to make healthy but there's another there's another link to this right here i'm trying to get to the just by oh here we go it comes from Rafa in the Hebrew, this one, the H7503, which means to sink, to relax, to sink down, to withdraw, right? And to slacken, right? To slacken. My point here is that if you look in the King James Version in Deuteronomy 2.11, notice the language. It says, which also, also, right, were accounted. Also, that means accounted. What is accounted? Chasab. Chasab in Hebrew means think, to think. So what, what the previous quote in 1333 was a quote of what these spies that told lies said. That's why I can't really rely on what they said. And then when I read their witness, their witness is a circular, is a circular narrative. You know, you know, like you say, what is a spliff? Oh, a spliff is a spliff that you smoke. You, you get it? It's almost like that. <laughs> you know, but they were accounted, they were thought to be the Rephaim, another ancient group of, of beings that were on the earth, but were not of the Adamic lineage, right? As the Anakim, right? But the Moabites called them a memes, a memes, because it is said that there were different tribes right of these beings now whether these beings were different groups of the nephilim it's not really known but the name it means mean terror terror terrors you know the word terror a mean is like terror almost like nightmares like nightmares like terrors like nightmares to fright like to fright like a bug beer right uh a idol like a like, uh, almost like a, yeah my mother had this doll. It was it was um it scared me at first. It was a doll that she grew up from the country from, you know, down south, South Carolina and everything. She must have brought it up with her. I don't know, but it was this real old doll, it was a clown, but it was always like kinda like you know, it, it had that kind of menacing, you know what I mean? Look to it and everything. But it's something like that, like when when children have these like nightmares. So there were these other beings, right? If you go to verse 20, scroll to verse 20 for a moment, same chapter. It says, that also was accounted a land of giants. Now the word giants here is Rephaim. It's not Nephilim. But the King James translate both giants as giants, though the underlying word is not the same. But let's just read this again. It says, that also was accounted so when it says accounted, it's like when you say, yeah, yeah, they thought that they were such and such. Yeah, they also had thought that they were such and such. They, they also had thought that it was a land of Rephaim. And the Rephaim dwelt, right, there in an old time. An old time, right, to say the times from before, right? So now remember, this is Moses' time, but one can tell, like, what the time before means. It could mean before the flood, right? It could mean... Most likely, it's speaking about 
a time before. Like the ancient Egyptians talk about the first time, right? The first time, you know, like the earliest time. And the Amorites call them Zamzumims. Now notice this. Each of these different people had different names for, it seems like the same beings. You know what I'm saying? So this one called them this. The next one called them that, right? And the Zam... Depends on, like, depends on geography. Yeah, and, 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 and the people, like the Zam, Zam, the Zam Zumims, it comes from a Hebrew word that means Zamam. Zamam means to like think a plan. But usually that word, we use that word um, Zamam in a bad sense, like a bad plan or choosing a bad plan, right? And so maybe the, Am the Ammonites called these Nephilim, these ones and ones. But you know what it was? It was that later day people, some of these beings no doubt did survive, you know, but then think about it. There's a lot of places in earth you know, there's more things in heaven and earth that has been dreamt of in the white Gentile philosophy. You know, our ancient peoples talked about it. If you look at our ancient African tribes and people, they talked about it. Ancient Semitic, Afro-Semitic tribes talk about it. Ancient, you know, um, Asian peoples. You know what I mean? They talk about these things and people think that they were just fantasizing. <laughs> you know, so I'm not denying that there were these beings. You see what I'm saying? And there's one more place, just to connect the dots, Deuteronomy 3.11, the next chapter. Deuteronomy 3.11. Now, I noticed something in Deuteronomy. There's a different word that translates as giants. You see what I'm saying? In English, when you read the English, you see giants. So you think it's all Nephilim. No, Nephilim is there in Genesis chapters. And Nephilim is there in um, Numbers. By the time we get to Deuteronomy 3.11, this is Moses now giving a narrative. Moses is saying, for only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants of the Rephaim. Now, there's another verse I mentioned to you before that in um, Jason Gwenther's book, he came across some very interesting part of study that we were familiar with, but he put together pretty well, even though he does not ascribe to the um, Seth and the Cain lineage. He's strictly about everything was the fallen angels. And I think some people don't like the idea that humanity sometimes has to separate from humanity. You know what I'm saying? With this all get together vibe, people don't like the fact that sometimes it is necessary. So I can't remember which book it is in right now, but um, you're probably going to, take, going to say it because um, the story where um, the sons of Seth were told not to go down the mountain because if they go down the mountain they would not be able to come back up i i think that uh, might be adam and eve that might yeah, be the book of adam and eve but it also speaks about the same the same seth sons of seth and the and the, and the daughters of cain narrative is is found in the kevin and gas is found in um the book of adam and eve and actually, it was the earlier view, right, of it before the other view of the, of the angelology. And as the Europeans came more into Christianity, he has this fascination with angelology. Because remember, there was two Enochs. Yes. And then if you go and look up Enochian magic, that's not the book of Enoch. So think about it. In this land of Nod, Cain had a son that he called yeah. Enoch. Yep. Yeah. And then today we have Enochian magic, which is basically some sort of an angel magic. They call that angel magic. But we know that the real book of Enoch, the Ethiopic book of Enoch, the Enoch of Seth's lineage, it went against that and exposed that. But there was another Enoch from Cain. So what I'm looking at is, how do we have this Enochian magic today? <laughs> what angels are teaching magic? Do you have to look, look at the Ethiopic book of Enoch now? Those were the fallen angels. So here in Deuteronomy 3.11, it says, For only Og, he was king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Here we have the Rephaim, right? Like, like Goliath, like the big Goliath. You know what I mean? We have the Rephaim. Now, 
I'm going to share this. We're going to get into this a little bit more because this is a good one. This is a this is a, a good reason right here. But just for you to connect to your second question. Remember the second question you had? That after the flood question? Yeah. You just talked, like, you know, you talked about a little bit just now. Okay. I, I think this is Joe. Let's go to Job 60, 26 and 5. Remember... The second word for giants in the King James Bible, the Hebrew word is refa, from refaim. Remember the word refaim, refaim. Who are the refaim? Notice that after the more accurate witness afterward, right, the, the Nephilim seem to have been restrained, right? But they had bastard byproducts that were kind of half, you could say half human, but have something else, right? Now, if there's a flood, how did it survive? I say that the Rephaim, who came from the Nephilim and were linked to the fallen angels, they survived from under the waters. They survived from under the waters. So when you look in, in Sumerian legends, when he saw the fish man God or something like that, let me see if I can just grab one of these right here. That's the reptilians they were talking about. Yeah, uh, think about for a moment. A fish, you see how a fish moves in water? It moves like a snake. Hope I don't turn people off if they eat fish or whatever, right? Um, but a fish moves like a snake. It's, it's basically the spine we're talking about. You know what I mean? You know, they have to propel forward, they have to make that movement. Ah, and that's the spine. You remember the fish gods um, of Samaria? If you look at the fish gods of Samaria, you'll notice I'm showing some of it on the screen where you see these fish gods like like um, um, Apkalu and other ones, these fish gods, right? Look up, everyone, look up Sumerian fish god and look at the images. You'll scroll down and you'll see all of that's part of that Anunnaki, Anakim, Anunnaki Nephilim Collective. You look at all these fish gods. You know, these fish gods. And there's a picture where it shows one walking out of the water. Now, why am I showing this right here? All right? Oh, right over here. Dagon. Dagon later on. Dagon of the Philistines was a fish god. Remember that, that, that Samson pulled down the, the, the temple of Dagon, of Dagon. Right? That was the god that they worshipped. You see, I've shown a picture of a man walking out of water, and he has like a fish on the top of his head. Right? He's called o Onez or Dagon. Right? Now, you get that verse? You get that verse in Job 65 and 5? 65 and 5? Sorry, sorry, sorry. My, my bad. I got this dyslexia. 26 and 5. <laughs> yeah, 26 and 5. I'm at 26 and 5. Okay. okay. Here's what it says. And I want to just share this one. This is one little verse here in, in the Hebrew. It's, a, it's an archaic Hebrew, so bear with me. It says, Ha Rephaim Ye Cholalu Mi Tahat Mayim We Shokanehem. Right? Now, the reason why I went through this right here is because the connection. Here, the translator translates Job 65 and 5, one of the oldest books in the Bible. I even think that maybe, maybe Moses knew of the book of Job. You know what I mean? That's how old it is. You know what I mean? That was a book like, you remember he was learning all that wisdom. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. because the, the Hebrew is an older form of it. That's how we kind of know. It's like if I show you King James Version. And so this was written yesterday. You'd be like, nah, that come from way back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So here it says, dead things are formed under the waters. You see that? And the inhabitants thereof. Now pause for a moment. Dead things are formed under the waters? Why? Right? Now the word for dead is Rafa. Now Rafa here they go to the right word. It's the same as the word Rephaim that we had touched on in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter two. In Deuteronomy chapter two and chapter three, where it talk about Og. Right? Here it says the ghost of dead of the dead. It says shades and spirits in the BDB. Right? But then when we bring it down to strongs. It, it has two senses here. One, Rafa can mean to heal, right? And then we have Rafa, which means to sink, to sink down, to sink, to drop. 
in a literal sense, it, like something like a stone sinks into the water, or in a metaphorical sense, a psycho-spiritual sense, like a person sinks into depression. But the word here is brought out as figuratively a ghost or the dead. But the word in the Hebrew here, when we look at the Hebrew, is ha rifaim. It's the same word that is used for giants in Deuteronomy chapter 2, I think verse 11 and verse 20, and then in Deuteronomy chapter 3. Right? So that's why Moses says in Deuteronomy, he says, he says, and they are also accounted. They're thought to be this. So Moses is basically telling you that people think, you know, like, like you know how there's, there's common beliefs of people, but they might not always be right and accurate. That's what Moses is saying. And he's saying how the different people call them different things. The same things, the different people of the different other ites, you know what I mean, have different names for it. You know, it's like fruit. Like you're you talking about some fruit that they call one name up here, but in the Caribbean, it has a different name. But, but we as black people, we like that same food, but you call it something different. You know what I mean? Kalaloo. You know, stew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gumbo. You know what I'm saying? We have different names for it, but we're talking about the same thing. But here when it says dead things, the word things, you see the word things, it's italicized. Remember the rule? In the King James Version, the majority of italicized words are not there in the Hebrew. So really, let's read it again. Dead are formed from under the waters. Wait, hold on for a moment. Dead are formed, the word is chul, chul, and chil, chil, right? It means to make a spiral. It means to twist, to turn. It can mean to twist, to turn. It can, it can mean to make a spiral, like you make a circle. You know, like you dance, you make a circle, or you whirl around. But it could also mean to make a spiral like a woman in labor. A woman in labor twist. You know, because the pain makes a body you know, twists. So what it's saying right here is that the Rifayim, right, were, sp were spiraling, were spinning under the waters, right, and the inhabitants thereof. Now, I then share this with all and sundry right here. Look at the Eastern, right, traditions of Sumer, Akkad, and these other countries where they show their high God wearing the fish like head as a hat and the body is going down their back. I'm showing a picture right here on the screen of one called Juanes or Oanes or Dagon, the god Dagon that, that the Philistines worship. Remember, um, Samson lost his eyes to the, to the Delilah and they had him up in the temple and he pulled down the house on them. The house he pulled down was a temple of this God, he, this, this other people, Elohim, called Dagon. Notice, he's a mermaid. This is where we get the mermaid from. The mermaid was part what? It was part man, right? Or woman, right? And part fish. And then we have a whole civilization, right, that makes a big religious tradition on this kind of mermaid fish tradition. Now, one of the oldest books in the Bible, what we know as the book of um, Job, and it's oldest because of its old use of the language. You know what I mean? I like to say also to ones and ones, I'm going to show this right here, that a lot of Egyptian culture, this might bother some ones, but a lot of it comes from the Kushites of the Far East. I'm talking about our peoples that were over there in... Um, in, in Sumer, Akkad, Babel, Babel, another now, another valley civilization. If we, go, if we want to know the truth, we got to know about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So some of our people later on coming across old art and facts began to worship these things. Like Kainan in the book of Jubilees where he found these stellas after the flood and he hid them from his father Noah because he knew he would be upset and he uh, translated it and he began to do some divine divining and anybody that knows about so-called sorcery or witchcraft there is a certain level of it that does tap into another dimension and taps into other beings just to keep everybody 411 there's some parts of it like religion like church that is bullshit that is bs but there's certain ones and ones that are true to it you know like some ones take the bible as joke but some 
take the Bible as 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 a, as a manual. I would even say as a, a so-called cookbook. You know what I mean? That know its words are real. You know what I mean? It depends on your inclination. It depends on your mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether you're going to get it or not. Because it says that the gospel is foolishness, right? The gospel, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. You know what I'm saying? So let us be fools before the world while we speak about these things. You know, until they then say, oh, you know, the Rephaim were the Anunnaki. Or not the Anunnaki, but the Sumer. Like Dagon and the rest of them. So when it says the dead things are formed under the waters, the dead things were spiraling or forming under the waters. And then we get a culture where they have their gods walking out of the waters and they worship these fish gods, the Sumerian fish god. <laughs> and that's after, a lot of this, a lot, that's after, get, get what I'm saying here, that is after the period of time that is referred to as the flood. So is it possible that some being survived since we have this verse in Job that says that the Rephaim, right, one of those eems from the Nepha Nephilim, right, were formed or reformed under the waters? Could it be that some of this mermaid thing may not be as some people think? That's why I quote that thing from Shakespeare. You know, there's more things in heaven and earth than people dream up in their philosophies. You know, like even the bones of giants. They've been finding bones of giants. You see what I'm saying? Of giant beings. Are we to dismiss that they were really giant beings? Because we're not as big as them? That would be foolishness. <laughs> so, in answer to how did some of these other beings continue, right? Like I said, Numbers chapter... Numbers chapter 1333 is questionable. Why I say it's questionable? Not because it's in the Bible, but when you read the Bible in context, that is the witness of ones who turned out to be liars or people who would bring back a bad story to discourage Israel from going into the land. You see what I'm saying? Like to keep us from repatriating. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> On that level right there. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of mixing going on. You know, there was a lot of mixing going on. And who knows if they knew that a flood was coming. And I would have no doubt that ones knew a flood, they, you know, like even if the Nephilim were not told this directly, you know, if, if Noah was preaching for all those years while he was building the ark, you know what I'm saying? Then they must have got the rumor, oh, a flood is coming? Yeah, there's this righteous man. There's this righteous man named, named, named Noah. And some even say some of his story can be found even among the Sumerian. You know what I mean? And yes, some of that is some of the same story. Not the Gilgamesh, but it's the next one. Forgot his name right now. That they say is the Sumerian Noah. Yeah, because many stories are passed on. But don't we say this often the ones? But do you know the true story? So when we say that the, the Bible, right, has, has the, the important point of the true story, if one can read it truthfully, you know, but it's not to dismiss, you know, the real archaeology being found. And if some people had some Bible views that, you know, like 6,000 year old, that's not even biblical, right? That's not even biblical. You know, what people have to recognize, it was ones like even some, some European Jews that work in science, that actually, like from a Jewish, a Judaic point of view, we don't, like we look at the scripture, we know that the scripture don't talk about 6,000 years. That was a white Christian that said that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That wasn't, you know, that, that's not a Hebrew perspective. The Hebrew perspective, the real Hebrew perspective, we already know that there's, there's periods of time that can't be accounted for. You know what I mean? Within the scripture, like those days before the sun and the moon and the stars. How, how do we count time? How has time been counted? First it was stellar, then it was lunar. Finally it became solar and lunar, mother and father kind of mix, you know what I mean? To get a most accurate time, you know what I mean? That's how they counted time, you know? But my brother, Chan, <laughs> this is Shabbat Eve reasoning right here, here, here. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Beautiful thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful reasoning. Beautiful reasoning. Give thanks, my brother. I know there's going to be yeah, some man. more on this because there's some other areas I want to highlight, but I want to take in what this reasoning has given to me. You know, what my brother has said and even what the, the small, still voice has said because sometimes when, you, when you're really revealing what the Holy Spirit is saying, sometimes you have to kind of take a moment and listen to yourself. Like, like what, what, what was that? You know, what was that that, that I said right there? Well, let me go check that out and then have another reason to come forward. <laughs> That's right. So it's not either or, it's both. You know, the narrative is both. It's, you know, it, it, it like happen on both sides. It happened on both sides, but it's like the Bible says, it's to rightly divide the word. Like, yes. to rightly explain the word. So it is a little bit of both in that sense. But some people, they mix up the narrative. You know, they put the, the, for example, that word giants, one need to get that word out of there. They need to uh, recognize, that's not what the Hebrew says. It says nephilim, nephilim. And once we recognize that the word is nephilim and mean fallen ones, and we can connect that with the fallen angels and with all of their Anunnaki business they were doing with Cain's, Cain's people, you know what I mean? Until the male, until the male got eliminated. The male basically was exterminated. And it's the same thing they're doing nowadays. You know what I mean? Because remember, the enmity wasn't against Adam and Eve. You get me? It wasn't an enmity with Adam and Eve. In fact, they wanted Eve. They wanted Eve for themselves, brothers. To show that in woman, what we have in woman, that some of these fallen angels, once they got a mind of man and a body of man, the first thing they wanted was our woman. Because that's one thing they, they really didn't have. <laughs> that's a unique thing on this earth. You know what I mean? Even we as men, we can't say what the father did when he built a woman. You know what I'm saying? Because according to the scripts, we were, you know, we were, we were asleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me put this out there to you because I don't know who else, you know, think this type of thing, but the ones are ones who have the same vibration why about to present here meditate on this for a minute those who don't want to check because like you said nothing new under the sun right and the narratives narrative is that these fallen angels only fell once right hmm but i don't have no proof they fall again right but i know in the ascension of the messiah there was angels panicking on his way up. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would you be panicking? Because remember when he came down, he came down in the form of every stage. So nobody knew he came down. When he went back up, he went back up in his full glory. So at, at every stage, he was seen going back up. And angels was asking, when did he go down? Mm, mm. And goes back to what is often said, keyword, keyword. And the Lord sent his word. You know what I mean? He sent yes. his word. That word. And that too, <laughs> like an in that too, according to the story, the angels who were in the firmament were the most worried. True, 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 true. Yep. Mm hmm. Why, why would that be? If we are all children playing somewhere, doing something, and one of our parents or our uncle or auntie or grandparent walk by and we get nervous, what I mean, we're doing something we shouldn't be doing, right? Hmm. Yeah, because since the, the son came on earth, he was like an angel. If you know what I'm saying. He was like a messenger. You know what I'm saying? On earth in that sense. But he was yeah. the son. He wasn't a angel descended like the other one so yeah how is this man going like like is there a man in heaven i can't go to the book of enoch yes you know what i'm saying is there but but then don't we say as above so below maybe we need to really say it say it differently as below you know what i mean when we return to our god self below <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then, <laughs> so above. You know what I'm saying? Because when he fulfilled that, you know, he perfected the humanity and he perfected the divinity. He perfected, you know, his nature. 
Like, like we say in the Orthodox Creed, that Yeshua is both, we say God and man. In other words, he's both human and divine. But that's how man was created. But the fall of man was he fell from his divine aspect, his divine mind. You know, and sometimes we only learn as children, as you mentioned, with children to do something by example. You know what I'm saying? We only learn by example. You know, one child see a next child playing with something, the next thing that child gonna play with it themselves. Because they learn by example. You put a toy there, the child might just look at it. But if the next child or you play with it, the child will learn by example. You know, to send that word. You know what I mean? But yeah, but they didn't know. They didn't know because if they knew who they were crucifying, what did the word say? They would not have done it. No. You know, you know, the fallen angels and their and their divisions and their men and people, you know, they would not have done it. Because what it did it flipped the whole paradigm. You know what I mean? In a sense it put angels in their place, especially the fallen angels. It put them in their place. You know, and any other angels that wanted to go down. <laughs> not being sent down, they wanted to go down. But yeah, man. Give thanks, give thanks, my brother. Um, we pick up on this. We pick up on this. This is a full of full meal right here. You know what I mean? As, as usual, just vibes in. <laughs> just vibes in. Just vibes in right here. The Nephilim. You know, who are the Nephilim? Who are the Nephilim really the giants? But you know what, my brother? Headrest on it. And it might be a day or so. Hopefully soon, soon, I'm going to post this one out there. You know, if you get an inspiration on the title, you make no, you know what I mean? Make I and I know. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I. Y yes, I. Sabbatical shalom, you know? Yeshua shalom. Yes, I. Sabbatical order. Sabbatical order. Yes, I. 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 Yes,